I really like the stuff when it's like the underdog, you know? Because I still feel like one of those. And I like the idea that a couple moves from me could help fuck with the people who had a hundred moves to make and did it. And they just weren't all that good. The two things that I love the most about your work is one is you seem to be prolific. So you seem to create volumes of, of things and you seem to always find something in anything and get very passionate about it. So, so now you said it's like my friend's silly little truck or this thing, but you saw something that other people might overlook and go, well, this is not really a thing that's worth my time. And you pour your, your heart and soul into it. Can you talk a little bit about that? If you're just starting out, it's all about the, you know, knowing how to play the deck of cards, you know, how to play these things and when to play them and, and how to enjoy them and how to make this stuff fun. Like if you're putting the energy into making a great sandwich out of a food cart, well, I'll put the energy to make sure that you look like you, like you are bad branding or bad outreach or just bad execution can take that sandwich down with it. You know, if it's the food cart, what are the couple moves my buddy gets to make? You know, it might only be the sign and a t-shirt and something to wrap the sandwich in. And that's it because he can't afford anything past that. So it's like, well, how do we take advantage of what we need to say there and think through the things that we're not quite seeing? I like that little bit of strategy. It's like stuff like, you know, you're going to need an Instagram, not just campaign, but a template. He's not a graphic designer. But can I arm him with something that he could just go back into one layer on a Photoshop doc? I'll show him how to make another layer, turn one off, turn one on, and then put the new sandwich special. I really like the stuff when it's like the underdog, you know, because I still feel like one of those. And I like the idea that a couple moves from me could help fuck with the people who had a 100 moves to make and did it. And they just weren't all that good. I really like arming people that they can look like they should be taken seriously. The fun part about the food cart thing was it helped elevate my friend to be a player in that crowd. And we had, to this day, I've never been paid a penny. You know, this is a thing called Cobra Dogs. A lot of our mission is to to give people control of their brands back, to give, because so often companies, they don't have the skill in-house or they don't have the, maybe it's just... Um, they don't have the, the the perception that they can do it themselves. So they give it out to these mm-hmm. designers and agencies and freelancers. And sometimes those people do right by them and other times they don't. Sometimes they give them a piece of work that that they can't use and eventually it just sort of dies. So, so if you were giving advice to someone who's got a company and they want to do what you've done and almost just take control back for themselves. Like what would you, what would you tell them to, to think about and to, to work towards? I try to explain to people what I do in branding or what I do for a client or even a buddy or whatever is like set up filters. And the idea is if you drop something, a piece of type through that filter, it acts and behaves and comes out a certain way. And it's not the way that me and you would talk. It's the way that that brand would come out and spit because then it's like everyone doesn't matter who's using the filter when they drop some messaging through it. They understand the hashtags and the things and the stuff and the whatever. These are our colors. These are limited moves we get to make. So for the couple moves you get to make, make sure they're consistent. When I worked on Cole Headwear, there was a way that we spoke. I guess that's branding too. There was a way that we message things. We weren't. Oh, we were chill. How would the guys who own the company talk to me? I would just record it and say, that's the copywriting. If we try to copyright this stuff, we're all going to fuck it up because you guys can't spell, much less write a coherent sentence. How did you tell me when we were just in the elevator? Oh, drop and that's the one with the cool little clip in the back. Done. <laughs> because that's authentic to them. Whenever I sell tips, you know, at these skill shares and shit, it's like, how do I make the client pick the logo? It's like, first of all, you got to get the client in the right headspace so they're engaged and they're excited and they're seeing that this little toolkit that comes with it lands on all their stuff. It works this big. It works this big on a you know a sweatshirt. You know, it's like we thought through all those elements. You know, 
So that's how you get people, you know, people to like start saying yes on things instead of I don't like that because I don't like that color today or whatever. Like I, I love when I start a logo out and people are like stressed and shit. And I just stop them and say, this is like DNA cre- cre- creation here. Like this should be really exciting. You know, we're going to come up with something that you guys get to use. Let's not say forever. Maybe it's five years or 10 years. We'll make something new in five years. But for the next five years, I'm going to arm you with something cool. Let's get in the right space. As we've talked to people who own brands, people who create brands, we've even spoken to someone who hires people for brands. And uh, I asked all of them this question, and that is, what role do you see brands playing in our society? Like, Where do you see brands fitting in to, to the world that we live in? It's like a set of relationships, a set of comfort of comforts, a set of trust, like uh, these little um, flavors. You look at a brand, you want to trust it and you want to believe in it and you don't want them to let you down. And you want to be like, I worked hard for my money and I trusted them. If they make lots of profit or little profit, I don't really care. This helps me make my life better. I trust it. And they're like, you know, it could be just in the sort of like consistency of how they talk in the world or how they look in the world or how I see them on my stuff. You know, you go all the way to the top, Apple, you know. For my needs, I can trust that stuff. I can trust it. There's a price you pay, you know, to have the coolest, latest shit or whatever you want to call it. But there's a relationship there, you know. And for my needs, I know I'm going to have to kind of cough up a little extra to get some of the, the greatest stuff in the world. And now that has been broken a smidge because I don't need another phone. But they're pushing me to get another phone. You know what I mean? Like this one works. In the last couple of cycles, I just let it go. I just let it go. Did I really need a better camera? You know what I mean? If a brand talks to you too much with too much advertising, it turns you away. But if they get to you in the right way, in a potent way, in a thoughtful way, we're still cool. You know what I mean? It's like a relationship. There's a Thai restaurant we've been going to here for 16 years. They're, at Christmas time, we go there for Christmas dinner, you know, the night before Christmas, because I'm so far away from my, my home in Michigan, you know. We go there and like, 16 years. We go every four weeks, three weeks. If they ever have a problem with the dish, they just mm-hmm. fix it right on the spot. You know what I mean? There's just no questions asked. They will have my heart forever. My girl sent me a picture this morning. We put a poster in a tube and we send these things off like 20 a day or something, right? One in a hundred. If it's thrown in a lake or gets backed over by a truck or just something in one of these ones... It was in a puddle. I mean, that's the only way you could do it. It was soaked in a puddle. The water goes up into the poster. It shreds off the bottom. And it just looks like a dog ate it or something. And it's like the kid, when he wrote me back, I mean, what am I out on that thing? Well, the value of it's 30 bucks plus shipping and all this other shit. Our first instinct always is just to say, we'll just send you another one. You're the one out of 100 that got shit on. We got you. And then when he wrote me back this morning, he was like, Kaplan, thank you so much. Like, first of all, the last poster I had to go missing, I had to buy another one. I was like, what are you talking about? Well, they made me take it up with the post office. Bureaucracy as far as you can, you know, whatever. You're never going to get a hold of someone. That's branding. I've got that guy for life now. Why? Because that's just our easiest policy. Like, just the idea of like making someone go through those hurdles, that's not good. That's just not good as a company, right? Brands can just be decent humans and companies can be decent humans and they can just treat humans the way they want to be treated. And that makes for a better world and a better experience and more loyal customers and ultimately probably in the long run more money.